Good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to the fifth day of the workshop on aquaculture and fisheries development and sustainability. We thank all the participants who have shown tremendous support to us in all these days. I welcome our revered General Secretary and Correspondent, Sardar Manjit Singh Nair, our ever motivating principal, Dr. M. G. Raghunathan, the Vice Principal, Dr. L. R. S. Kalanidhi, Dean of various schools, heads of various departments, staff members, colleagues, research scholars, students, and, and the heart and soul of the program, the wonderful participants from various fields across the state, across the country, gathered here to learn and to show their support for this indis indispensable sector of aquaculture and fisheries. We have amongst us a very eminent resource person, Dr. Jay Kumar, field scientist, C6 Energy Private Limited from Cutie Curran, who would be talking on the latest emerging technologies in seaweed farming around the world with special emphasis to Indian seaweed farming. We welcome you, sir. We are eager to hear about the seaweed farming, the current scenario at the Indian and global level. I request Mr. Sandil Bhairavan, Assistant Professor, PG and Research Department of Advanced Zoology and Biotechnology, Guru Nanak College, to introduce the resource person. Thank you, Madam. A very good afternoon to everyone who have gathered here in this platform for the fifth day of the workshop on aquaculture and fisheries, development and sustainability organized by the PG and Research Department of Advanced Zoology and Biotechnology, Guru Nanak College. It's my pleasure to introduce our resource person, Dr. M. Jai Kumar, who is going to share his experience on the latest emerging trends in seaweed farming. Dr. Jai Kumar holds a doctorate degree in marine biology and masters in the field of oceanography and coastal studies. Currently, he is working as a field scientist in C6 Private Limited, Tutikorin, and also associated with various platform, platforms like DBT, uh, CCAMP, NCBS Typhoon for developing technologies to grow seaweeds in ocean waters and fisheries. Dr. Jay Kumar has been associated with esteemed organizations as a consultant like Voyan Solutions, Aquaculture Foundations of India, and Institute for Ocean Management. He also served as a project scientist in the Division of Ecotoxicology, ICMAM, Ministry of Earth Sciences, Government of India. He has published a book and more than 40 research articles in reputed journals. So I welcome Dr. Jay Kumar to enrich us with the sea witch. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, thank Mr. Manavan. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Over to our resource person, Dr. Jay Kumar, to present. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Madhavan, and thank you, ma'am, for giving me a wonderful uh, introduction. So, first of all, I want to thank that uh, college management for giving a wonderful opportunity to talk about uh, my experience as well as the seaweed farming. So, so here I'm going to talk about the main feature of the land land-based uh, aquaculture, that is uh, land-based farming and uh, what are the different methods we can practice in India, as well as what are the opportunity we can uh, through the seaweed farming, how it, it will develop uh, in future. Because still India is still in a beginner of uh, seaweed farming because recently we have made, that is two decades, we have uh, set up uh, ocean farming, that is near shore, as well as uh, coastal waters, some little coastal water. So we need uh, some importance for this, how to maintain, how to manage a farm in a land base, as well as what are the precautions, what are the design methods. So I'm here to talk about the detailed thing about the land-based seaweed farming, that is seaweed aquaculture. So first of all, I want to uh, explain that where I'm from. I'm from C6 Energy. So C6 Energy is a company that, is, that was founded in the campus of IIT Chennai, Madras. So it started like several alumni of the institute. The company is currently headquarters at Bangalore, that is CCAM, uh, NCPS. So the company has a technology to convert actually a seaweed biomass, that is seaweed to the biofuel, uh, and also a plant. 
growth stimulant and i also have yeah, planned different product like antivirus antibacterial from the cv and also we are preparing we are making uh, animal feed ingredients that is for poultry and uh, shrimp and fisheries like that fisheries products we are making and also we are uh, mainly we, our focus to be a bio uh, renewable products to replace the chemical and plastics so this is our company profile and uh, so now we have to come to why land based agriculture needed we have a lot of sea and a lot of spaces like is, the, is there in india but still seaweed farming is very minute that is very least so some part in tamil nadu that is majorly the seaweed farming is boom in only tamil nadu that is rameshwaram belt and also a little where in pudukottai area and some are is practicing in thoothukudi uh, area but this vast uh, sea coast we are doing only a point not only a 0.1 percentage of the whole production so we need land base because sea has to uh, sea have different features different climatic features tides everything so well, all sea coast is not favorable for seaweed uh, cultivation so we will do the land based cultivation so this is the pioneer in india still we are the beginners not at initiate but this is for a uh some motivation for the uh, for the participant as well as the entrepreneur who can see the slides and the, who can who can uh, see this presentation can easily can go for the land based cultivation so because of uh, population world population in 2040 it is going uh, increasing to 9 billion population so this is because we have a coast we have fishery product fishery resources crustacean resources but still we have lagging of uh, feeding this uh, population so for this we need a land based aquaculture so as per the statistic 2050 that uh, world production is going to increase by 35 percentage of the current value so for this to feed we need maybe increase to 70 to 100 percent for the production by doing this thing land based seaweed uh, aquaculture so Uh, we know all about that the ocean covers 70% of the earth is it 1.2 percentage that is 120 metric million metric tons so for the 10 billion metric ton of food that produced each year so the farm seaweed production farm seaweed production is 99.4 percentage mainly from the developing countries like china japan indonesia and philippines south asian country like korea japan vietnam malaysia like this so the small countries are doing a uh, full fledged of uh, land based uh, this uh, sea farming of seaweed so before starting the seaweed so some of the beginners uh, they doesn't know what is seaweed how it is this everything so i want to explain a little bit so this is a seaweed the seaweed consists of blades floats stems hold fast is called thallus so thallus is a complete body of the seaweed so we, we, once you we take a seaweed we can all of leaf like structures so that we call as full part we call as thallus and the blades are there the each leaves are like a blade a leaf like flattened portion of the thallus is provide a large surface of the area for the ports and beaches and the nimrod cyst is the gas filled blade is used for flotation stripe is a stem as no muscular tissue old for is to attach the thallus at the bottom so these are different type of seaweeds are there some seaweeds are the attachment that can hold fast at the bottom or some substrate and some seaweeds are floating seaweeds so don't uh, doesn't have any uh, nimrosids or anything so this so these are the basic concepts of the seaweed how uh, it looks like that and uh, there are three type of seaweed in the global we can see we can say that green seaweed red seaweed and brown seaweed so these are the world uh, geographical locations where the seaweed farming in our in our own uh, world carrying out so in that red shows the intense seaweed farming that is south asian country like uh, indonesia philippines vietnam japan china these are the area that the mass cultivation is going on and some part of the green that is a moderate uh, seaweed farming you can say that in uh, some africa portion some south africa some like that some portion and yellow shows that yellow shows that that africa not africa west africa like that some part and some part in australia so these are the world uh, map showing the geography location of the seaweed farming and if you take up the global seaweed production so this global seaweed production that is the cultural vegetative propagation of seaweed like ecopia and capabecus contribute uh, more than 40 percentage so remaining grass area is 14 percentage land area japanic has 20 percentage wooded area pink to pretty is 9 percentage and porifera 7 percentage 
concentrated. So these are the some important uh, commercial seaweed uh, uh, which can be used for the different sources. For example, for 70% of this production we used for the food industries and 30% for the alkaloids and 12% for the application of the toxic gas and the cosmetics and fertilizer etc. So the global seaweed diversity, there are 10,000 uh, seaweed species reported all over, all over the world into the three major groups. That is, Chlorophyta has 1,500 species, Rhodophyta has 6,500 species, and Phyophyta has 1,800 species. That is brown algae. Rhodophyta, you know that is red algae, and Chlorophyta is a green algae. So why we need the seaweed cultivation? How it would protect the environment? If you take the environment is protected by the seaweed means, for example, if you take a one ton of seaweed, that will it will control the mitigation climate change for 120 kilograms of carbon plus and also it will improve the water quality. How it will improve it is 2 kilograms of nitrate and 5 kilograms of phosphate. It will improve the water quality. By this, finally, the conclusion that by doing this uh, seaweed forming in around in the shallow water or in the open water in the open ocean like this, right? surely we can say that is a, it's, it will give more fish because this seaweed farming is acting as a nursery ground for the so many fishes and crustaceans. So this will finally will yield a good yield for the uh, fisheries uh, uh, areas, uh, nursery area, development of the fisheries resource. So finally we will get 10, for the one ton of seaweed, we will get 10 kilogram of more fish we will get in that area. So it also it will protect uh, the environmental uh, and ecological impact like that. It will preserve the coral reefs and it provides, uh, as I told, it provides the added, added energy for the local species and also forming Form will increase the production of fin fish and shellfish will be increasing and also it will observe the capture of uh, excess nutrient and the bioremediation and uh, these are the some uh, important things uh, while we are doing uh, the seaweed cultivation these are some benefits to the ecological. So and also some little advantage in the open sea that is the sea based uh, cultivation. So uh, this is the uh, autotopic plant it absorbs nutrition already I told the minerals uh, it nitrogen minerals and other uh, phosphorus present the sea water under sea and light and also cycling of the nutrient means of cycling of wealth. So a major source of kappa, kappa phagase is a carotenoid. So why I am talking about especially of the kappa phagase? Because the kappa phagase is a major uh, seaweed, uh, uh, commercial seaweed that uh, doing agriculture, sea agriculture. So this is the vegetative propagation. So there is no need of more uh, spores coming and uh, any other technique or any other genetic uh, uh, thing needed. Simply it's a vegetative propagation. Just pick and just tie it in the water. The sunlight and the sea water is enough for the growing this thing. So this is a fast and uh, easy and fast growing uh, and can be easy for harvest also. And cultivation technology is simple as I told you. It can easily be the raft weather, easy weather we can do. But still we have a a lot of advanced technology we need to do this cultivation for this only for this reason i'm just looking this topic for the land-based aquaculture so why the land-based aquaculture seaweed in tank culture in india is very not known india has not taken up any seaweed cultivation because still we are in the biggest stage in the seaweed farming in the sea base still we need to develop a land-based technology so all over the islands and the indian coastal land is 16,000 to 17,000 kilometer of length is there with the 821 species of seaweed all over the indian coastal we are getting only recently only recently seaweed cultivation i told earlier is picking up in the central coastal district in tamil nadu so still Gujarat, little bit Gujarat and the full village of Tamil Nadu, it is developing. Tamil Nadu is developing four states, uh, the seaweed cultivation is developed. That is in Mandalam, Ramna district, Pudukota district, Pukkudi district, and little patches in uh, Kandyagumari district. So these uh, four districts only we are doing. And these four districts, we can't say that yeah, all every season or yeah, all, all conditions it will grow. So only we have a particular season for a particular month. This will go in particular districts. For example, if you take this uh, Kutukudi, so April, May, June, July, August, September, these are the four months we can grow this seaweed cultivation in sea for four months. That is uh, June, July, August, September, and little half of October. And if you take in Pudukote district, the seaweed will grow from December to uh, May. So in Pudukone district, uh, December is the seaweed cultivation will initiate and it will close uh, at the shutdown at uh, April and May. And if you take about this uh, Ram district seaweed cultivation, starting from the January to October month, that is 11 month or 10 month, easily we can do the seaweed cultivation in the Ramna district. 
so this ramda district is a hub for the hindered seaweed cultivation so after this one we are uh, we are just uh, taking seaweed to the gujarat from andhra or so many things all the seaweeds there are the coast other uh, other state are developing the seaweed are taken from only from the mandam area that is ramda district so seaweed farming is one of the top priority to set up a development in india especially in tamil nadu due to increasing world demand of the processed seaweed so we have to develop this technique if you wish it now so later on the next five years we can say that we are the, one of the main uh, major pioneer for the land based aquaculture uh, for seaweed farming especially so we have uh, al- already we have started uh, agriculture there and uh, other things for the fish shell fish but still we are not at initiated for the seaweed uh, land based uh, culture so this could be a, a very important and uh, and very pioneer for the next future generation for doing the seaweed farming because nowadays due to the global warming the temperature is increasing to 1 to 1.5 degrees celsius every year so lot of uh, global warming so temperature rising so due to temperature rising the seaweed will be affecting So, so many microbes will be attacking. So, uh, as you take that earlier yield, that is in 2000 to 2010 is different and uh, different yield we get. But 2010 to 2020, we have a different state because seaweed is not growing up to the mark in the sea because due to this global warming. So, we need to do some alternate techniques or alternate method to grow seaweed. So, this is a good way to, this is a good time to start this uh, seaweed uh, in tank culture or landless culture like this. So therefore, a complete experiment design should be applied to the complete species in order to introduce new species to ability to grow in tank culture system. So history of we take history of seaweed cultivation. This is the 260 years in Japan, two radical that is two uh, centuries that is they are growing a seaweed in the little uh, porifera. So they have, they have a long history. The Japanese they will eat and uh, they will eat uh, one of the major ingredient like the seaweed. They have as different varieties of seaweed soup or seaweed uh, recipes like that. Every day they used to take on seaweed recipes. So this is the earlier history in Japan. This is some uh, processing of a nori sheets in Japan. How they traditionally they are uh, drying up uh, nori. These are some photographs. And uh, now we are going up to the latest emerging method of seaweed farming. So, so in what way the different in the world are carrying out this work? And what are the seaweeds they are doing for the land-based aquaculture? So, what are the methods they are doing in the, uh, this thing? We can discuss in this uh, slide. So, that type of background production system. So, this seaweed can be grow in the land-based seaweed culture, seaweed culture in the raceway pond and tanks, and rough water seaweed culture. And like a sea combine is a seaweed tractor is patented by C6. We have made one sea combine seaweed tractor from C6 energy. So I want. I'm going to explain these four things in the detail things, detail way. So if we take the land based seaweed aquaculture, so there are. I already told that 10,000 macroalgae species listed. Despite that, only six to ten or uh, to twelve genera we can suitably we can do this uh, plant based or tank based cultivation. So these are the major cultivable species: the lamnera, wooded area, porifera, capafagus, pondus, alvas, escopulum, grasslia. These are the different species we can. we can do a land based culture so so i told already this uh, already the commercial land based culture are been already started means 2009 from 2003 2007 2008 this uh, reference are nothing but there are some companies that initiated and started already for example ulwa ulwa species already the blue evolution a company in south africa already started this for commercial so This commercial land-based uh, cultivation, seaweed cultivation, is being mainly used for the food grade, so not for the other uh, thing, for fertilizer or anything, because they are controlled everything in the land-based, and this uh, seaweed is mainly used for the food grade uh, processes and for food grade uh, uh, materials only. They are preferring from this seaweed. So, for example, Ulwa is a blue evolution, started in 2009. Kalapa is a uh, pulpens. And Chanda is from the Acadian Sea Plant in Canada, and Palmyra is a USA, and Porifera in Israel, and Gelidium in Israel, and Bonisibinia uh, is uh, Portugal, and uh, and Chanda Campus is USA, and Pacific Coral Sea is USA, and Coral Sea Glacier is USA. Most of these are the something. So the commercial seaweed cultivation, land-based cultivation, already started. They're doing full-fledged in the land-based thing. So this is for the information. So other. 
and some of the asian countries south east asian countries and some are some part of the european countries the pilot scale is doing for the pilot work is going so what uh, this all what i told you this all species some are developing in the asian country and also in some european countries and forestera lamb area wooded ecumia and gas area alva sarcasum cladophora and astrophila palmaria so these are some species etomorpha so they are doing the pilot scale they are doing some r and d regarding this to show how to grow this in the land base and other land base or race culture like that they are doing r and d so first of all we have to see about the land based seaweed aquaculture so land based natural facilities how how it is be useful so seaweed uh, culture the race way and pond and pond tanks so designing construction is very important because we have to take a uh, Site. We have to pick a site which we are nearer to the coast. That is from 100 to 500 meter near the coast. We have to set, and with some electricity and electricity facility will be there, and also the filtration pipe unit will be there, and also pumping system at 10 hp to 13 uh, hp pump. Uh, hp pump is needed, and draining out for 5 hp pump is needed to drain out the thing. So the tanks, various tanks, we have to set up. depending on the what are the different depending on the species what they are going to select so depending on the species the different types of tank should be modified according to our view so these are something the tanks of the various size of the multiple species can be sited together repeat small units are we initiate made because small units means we can control the nutrient and also stress so we can easily develop the genetic selection so a small small unit can be uh, very good for uh, going for the bigger uh, version and also the small quantities of the new uh, new products can be produced at a reasonable cost to create a large ocean for me so these are the some important points before starting our uh, uh, raceway or uh, tank culture so and also a yeah, operational advantage i have uh, operational advantage if you take so if you take this uh, boats are uh, boats are not required uh, any special equipments are not required to assess the site just to be walkable and manpower no no two or three manpower we can take some seven to eight metric tons of seaweed we can develop so land based systems highly remove uh, removed uh, other remove, uh, remove from the tides waves and uh, wind impact because the uh, sea is forming what we are facing nowadays so when the growing uh, going uh, going to harvest seaweed in the sea because of the wind or because of uh, any other uh, calamities this will washed away because putting the cultivators putting effort for 50 to 40 to 50 days and while well, going for the final harvest so they'll be removed they'll be washed away because of this tides and other uh, calamities uh, elemental calamities like uh, wind or uh, other things so by doing this we can save the most of the seaweed in a particular thing and we can the cultivators mainly the cultivators can be very benefit we have any benefit from this uh, approach in our land based thing and plant diversity light can be accurately controlled because uh, if you see in the morning nowadays the field are going every day so morning 10 o'clock if you see in, if you see in the post it look like a temperature around 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock the mid after like that so morning sun itself it giving 34 to 35 degrees celsius that time the water temperature in the morning i'll i'll bring some 33 34 what see what a temperature so this, that is a small plant so it won't hold at that much uh, temperature and all so we have to do some alternate way so the uh, this european countries and the us uh, us are all things they made uh, already they took initiative 10 years back and still we are at the beginning still we have to do this thing and also shading and nutrient level can be adjusted to the favor production as i told that we can put the shade net to the top and we can adjust the sunlight and also the nutrient can be adjusted and uh, yeah, we can control this aquaculture is something but we can control the thing what are we need we can regulate regulatory and we can control the things and also hatcheries are not needed badly for the natural care for vegetative use but to produce high quality resistant strain we need a hatchery that's why so this vegetative propagation all over the world they are not thinking about uh, mainly because these strains these vegetative strains they simply we can Cut it and if you put it high there in the sea water, it will grow. But due to this nowadays that uh, global warming and other parameters, it will affecting the strains. So the strains every year, this every ten uh, one week, the strain is going on weekend and weekend. So we need to produce a high good strain which we need a hatchery. So like a seed bank or seed hatchery for the couple of acres salvage the seed. So the product quality advantage. So what are what are the advantage? What are the outcome product quality? So macro and micro nutrients can be efficiently controlled. I told that earlier that what is the nutrient we need for the land-based aquaculture? We can control in such a way. 
it can calculate in such a way. What is the Newton needed for the, for one square meter of the cement? Because we can easily we can put. So that's why that's why we can reduce the diatom growth because in diatom is nothing. Which of nutrient this diatom will come and occur? Come and occur. But we are know that how much nutrient we we need to produce one metric ton of cement or land base. We can do. We can put the same actually that what is the nutrient level? We can put that. And for some species. Some species, the protein content doesn't vary over there. So that's why. What is the means? So if if you see that the protein content in the seed base forming will be vary. So depending on the season growth, summer season, winter season, the rainy season, monsoon, pre-monsoon, monsoon, this means this protein content will be vary. But if we do this culture in our controlled manner, this won't vary. But we want The protein we need, we can take up the same protein from the land-based seaweed culture, and also daily or weekend harvest is possible. So uh, any time we can do harvest. We, today we see that it is growing, it's going to harvest. We can harvest any time. Means, or uh, tomorrow is full moon, tomorrow is half moon, tomorrow is a new moon. No need to do because while doing this uh, harvest, in, we have to check everything because full moon day and new moon day it will be very it will be very rough. So we can't go into the nature to see and culture harvest anything. So. This way, this we can control all the things. Can uh, daily we can uh, daily also we can harvest, and uh, uh, weekly also we can harvest. So we can control the invertebrate cluster and epiphyte as possible because this is the main problem in the seaweed farming in the sea-based aquaculture. That is seaweed farming in the open water because if nutrient is less or any sunlight is less or any other uh, there is no water motion or uh, no wind winds. The seaweed will uh, easily affected by the pests like uh, rabbit fish, parrot fish, fish bite is there, and wasp bite is there, and some other epiphytes will be attached and it will will eradicate the species. So many things are there. So we have to free from this pest country pest and also the epiphytes uh, if you do this land based aquaculture in the land. And for some examples that is kelp species, the harvest season is significantly extended. So we are not doing kelp. This is some uh, American countries, the Europe countries are doing kelp, and uh, traceability, sustainability, secure supply to the supply to the ocean basis. So we can traceability, we can we can assurance, we can give assurance. So we can supply it. Or if for a company, uh, our company or industry, we can give a what that two ton, the five ton metric ton, a ten metric ton you need, we can give a that much metric ton in the supply time. So we can do this harvest. But if it's a land based, uh, sea based, that means that we can't. We can't promise this uh, thing because sometimes it will grow, sometimes it will not grow. Sometimes growing something you have to harvest. So this concrete harvest, something we need more manpower. So if manpower is less, we can't harvest. So at that time, this uh, some calamities come in. This will fall off. So this is the best thing for the land-based aquaculture to do. And what will we like to know about the macroalgae production? For I, I told already. So first of all, we have to think about the yield. So Simply, we can't we can't put that much seed in the pond or that much seed in the uh, raceway or that much seed in the uh, tank or uh, pond or uh, raceway because we need to identify the growing seed period. For example, if you give one kg, if you put it in the tank, so how many times it is growing in the tank? For example, the two times or three times the growth. So, for example, if you put two kg, whether it is giving in ten ten days, how much kg or how much uh, kilogram per square feet it is giving. So, yield has to be measured, and also we have to measure the nitrate and carbon. These are the basic preliminary things before going for the land base. So, we have to need the protein, specific protein, and lipids, hydrochlorides, and other alkaline carbon will be getting bioactive compounds and oligo saccharides, prebiotic, phenolic, and uh, Function foods component that is everything we have to measure before going for the production or before going for the cultivation of the land base. And also, I told already the important things means is the engineering design. That is what is uh, what is the seaweed you are going to put, and what is the density, and what is the depth we need, and what volume in meter cube. So shape. And uh, yeah, water, hydraulic retention time, and uh, rotational speed of the natural day. So how much, how much rotation RPM we need? Simply we put more aeration, RPM increase, the seed will break. So we have to measure everything with the pilot R and D and plant density and uh, light. What is the light we need uh, per mole per day? So specific light density, 
So everything we have to measure. Simply, then putting an arranging a tank in that port. So we have to do so many preliminary things before uh, initiating the land based deposition. And as I told the import requirements, I told the pump, uh, what is that? If we have blow air and pumps, nutrients, what are the nutrients we need, test what we need, harvest requirements, rinsing, drying process, and transportation which is near to the area, town, we need transportation. So output, I told them, kilogram week per day, kilogram week. So process, how much we are getting from the one, uh, one kilometer, one square, 20 kilometer square pond, or 20 kilometer square pond, or seven feet pond, and like that, we have to measure everything. These are some basic requirements. And uh, now we are sh I'm showing this is a thing by Academy Seed Plant Company. So they're doing a land based uh, corner species. So they're doing a uh, near to the she. So how big you see leaves? The acres and acres they're doing. It's a land based uh, in the system. So this photograph I took in the 2010. So here will be a Academy Seed Plant. This is also a uh, current thing. So this is a near shore, they are putting a big, big tank. Big, big tank they are doing. So see how the outlet, inlet, so see the drain out water is same in the sea. So these are some land based. And uh, now we are going to talk about the raceway ponds. So raceway ponds, uh, nothing but same water, recycling the same water. And uh, we are calculating this uh, seaweed. And this is the low maintenance cost. So compared to the sea farm, fuel charge, as a security, everything, nothing we needed. And also provide the baseline data for the R&D facility. So every first time we will be getting generating more data for the CV to farming for the will develop and we can make it a somewhat advanced uh, thing with the help of this basic data. So this is the basic benefit of the CV project, raceway and farm. So this is all what tanks. See how the river tanks are maintaining, water aeration will be there. So they will be taking inlet of water. So the circulating water, the aeration, blow air will be sitting in the bottom. So they will be maintaining their speed, RPM, I told them earlier. They have already, these things are set up, uh, that uh, standardization are over, they are doing that in uh, Canada. So these are some kelp growing in the uh, US. So they are doing daytime. And normal normal lights, normal that uh, lights, and night time they are putting LED lights, so blue LED lights. They are putting for a light time LED lights, blue color light, and daytime is normal sunlight. They are doing culture, house land based greenhouse land based cultivation, but kelp plant in U.S. they are doing this culture, and this is also a raceway, a small raceway in the greenhouse. So greenhouse they are doing this raceway culture. So this is also the same, this race culture, they have to exchange the water depending on the growth of the density. Because this, this I told you, this I told earlier, we need to calibrate each and everything, pump speed, a growing blower speed and water capacity, how much water is getting out, drain out for every hour or every 15 minutes. So that this has to calculate every time. So after that only we can uh, set up this race culture. So this this raceway culture they've been doing at US. And this is the skeleton thing of raceway. So is a this raceway is not continuous raceway, this will be a partition raceway. So reservoir tank and also a filtration tank. So the inlet of the thing is directly pumped from the sea, but will be filtered in the 750 liter of uh, filter tank. After filtration, it is going to the reservoir tank that is uh, 1,000 uh, 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 liters of reservoir tank water should be, should be put in there and after this it is going to A1, A2, A3 and B1, B2, B3. So opposite side they have tank. So the inlet flow rate of the reservoir to the reservoir is 37.5 liters per minute. That is inlet flow rate of the reservoir. From the filtration tank. That is 37 liters per minute the water is flowing in this thing. From the reservoir, that is A1 to A2. Reservoir to A1, that is 50 liters per minute. A1 to A2 is 50 liters per minute. So these are 50 minutes per liter. They have calculated the standard rate by this from the US railway. So, like this, we are developing this technique in India 
especially in uh, ram nadu or any other tutu kodi or kudukondi we has to stabilize our kappa fibers and we have to break up our own techniques so how much we need we need to uh, set the water like this we have to do a something like this before going for the tank uh, base uh, land base or tank base or as we This is some kind of thing, and you see this photograph. This I told. This is the raceway tank condition by raceway. So A one, A two, A three is the filter tank. The, the, the water will be rotating, and down you see the valve. So that valve, uh, the water should be poured out. So these are the twenty-four tank array. This is the land, tank based. They are shown in Canada. They are doing this culture. So you see, in one setup, they have twenty-four tanks. This is uh, this is doing in Manchester. And uh, this is 1,200 gallon production tank as side view. So this is a diffuser that is a blower will be keeping inside the center. Diffuser that is blower. So how it looks? How the tank looks? See the bottom? How the bow shape? To see if it, see if it won't break if you go on. If you build it, then the tank will fall apart. It will break. So they made a circular thing. See how the aeration is going? This is made green. Do you see? Do you see it? See how they're doing. This is 600 gallon such tank near the shore. Big tank. How nice that they made a setup. With the underwater piping system and everything. HP PVC pipes. So this is a tank like what we are doing. Like how we are doing under like that. They made a three feet circular tank. This is mainly for the do you see archeries, nurseries. Small seaweed to the bigger seaweed. If you are going for the bigger tank, before that we are putting for the smaller tank for growth. After this one month or two months growth, we are just taking from this tank and then going for the rest of the culture. This is a it's a hatchery and nursery setup for the dulci. So this is a type of uh, trough they are using for the dulci seaweed. This is some other trough near the shore. How they are uh, nicely they are managing. See, this is a small small seaweed for the nursery development. After this development, they'll go for a trough, three feet like this, different different stage. So it can go for directly to the pond, depending on the species. So that that species, we have to put it in the different stage. Different stage, we have to change because first the incubation, after the growth phase, like that, so many different different phases there for every species. According to that, we have to prepare a pond or prepare a tank. So this is a pond about the raceway and the pond. And now we are going for the rough water seaweed culture. This rough water culture, we are doing. Uh, we are, we are, C6 are doing at Kanyakumari. We put a test and we got a good success rate of this uh, rough water. This we are doing at the like, Lipuram and Aragipuram in our Kanyakumari district. This is a tube net method with HDP pipe floating as a floats. And the other side we are tube net that is a dead back method. Right side is a dead back method. So if we keep half kg, uh, within 45 days we got three kg of seaweed. That much growth we are getting in the rough water because why we are preferring rough water? Rough water having a nutrient, high nutrient depletion, high nutrient waves. So the nutrient rich water from the deeper water will come to near to the shore or come to the deeper area, so that seaweed will nicely to grow in that area. So deeper water, deeper water seaweed farming is good, but it is a cost expensive because we need a boat, we need a skilled labor, and in The rate, everything when compared to the boat, boat and skill level, this is very minimal. So people won't uh, select this kind of thing. But we have techniques, we have technology, so we can develop like this. So I told already, you know, this uh, Nagaraj ke Pacific Northwest that Pacific uh, Shawal Dulci and all. See how the growth uh, starter stage. You see the left side, small starter stage. They put it in the small pot like thing. And after that, the growing for the bigger version of the pond or bigger version of the tank like that. Different tanks I shown earlier. So that the different different way they have been doing this thing. So see the growth, the summer growth and the spring growth. That also is affecting. See. So this is a dulci, a sweet dulci. I told. We see the starter growth. We see the summer growth. How it's doing growth. So this is all the same alwa. This is developing in the all the land base. These are all food grade, not for other uh, thing, commercial or anything. They will grow only commercial for only food grade. They are not using for any other fertilizer, not for any other things, other uh, so the mainly for food grade. So 
these are all the advanced techniques and everything and now we are coming to the 20th century methods how we are doing last two three decades and how we are preparing like this so these are some old techniques in civil culture so this is the bottom culture or floating monolines sub cage the two meter length with the water feet light and this is our 50 meter monoline these are all some old techniques we are using in the land base this is some uh, land tie method this is how you see the bamboo so we have to tie the both corners so it just with the bamboo nicely with the flare changing with the net we have to put some little seaweed so this under the rough water it won't visible and rough waves or anything comes from this will break so it's very not strong the cattle the labor of the intensive or difficult to maintain as i told you these are some material that we people are practicing in indonesia and some malaysia philippines they used to do this method now they are uh, switched to the easier method this is a spider web method oh this is a 10 to 20 meter depth open uh, open water bodies but it is very very expensive cattle labor intensive difficult to set up because how many anchors we have to put uh, bottom so it's very very passive so this cage culture in uh, somewhere in china they are doing so this is the cave in the cage culture so how nice it set up this cage culture they see see how it is going but this is also a cost expensive and laborious thing so these are the photographs what i showing these are the 20th century is the people in uh, rest of the world means how they are doing in south east asia country how we are doing in japan how we are doing in indonesia philippines like this will be country so this is it forming you see in china so china this is how, how long is it forming full of seaweed thing this is in japan the pole system i have a rekka in japan at size of 2 meter to 8 meter length so now now we are coming to these are the methods i told earlier what we are what uh, the seaweed uh, cultivation people practice in south asian countries and other part of the world so now we are coming to the aquaculture salvage cultivation in indian context so now i let told that it in coast and so in around india mainland is 800 800 km coast and that 845 species of seaweed seaweed uh, 434 red and 194 brown and 260 species of green seaweed so these are some uh, edible seaweed these are the i called uh, seaweed so that is alva color pan porphora and uh, pitogradia and cerilla and sarcasa these are the common seaweed you have get in andaman and other gujarat so as i told still now we are practicing the raft method is the cheapest method but but uh, these are some disadvantage so people daily they have to go and see the growth you cannot growing we have to resize uh, the ship places from the non growing to the growing area so like it so many things are there so for under rat this is the cost economics this tool like 25000 is needed for the making of under uh, bamboo method so this method is been doing at uh, this method of cultivation is been doing in uh, uh bilado that is in mandavam area rama districts and this is the pole method is a 6 mm uh, rope is 6 mm uh, uh, hdp rope we will be using this uh, method so the distance between the each uh, distance between the each pole is around uh, two, 2 meter to 3 meter the distance between the line that is uh, around uh, 7 meters so this is cost economics for the under mono line that is uh, 8090 for me under wall this for uh, this pudukodai and this one that we practice in pudukodai district that is 7 meter monoline and uh, this is uh, this was the 15 meter monoline that the practice dotukodi so this we need a uh, four anchors will be strengthen this uh, culture so we need four anchors and uh, these are the uh, cost uh, estimate for making this under monoline of 50 meters you need to pose it to one we need for this and back we need to of the 800 so this is a cost uh, cost economics for the rough water cultivation in india money so this i told all the people we connected and we got to see people how they are working to achieve it this field trials we conducted at around uh, 2018 we connected so we got a good result 
So for doing all these things, we need a seed bank in India. Because I told already, the seaweed won't grow in time months in all four districts. So each and every thing, the transition period is gone. So we have to circulate the seaweed from Andaman to Pudukote. When we know that the seaweed growth is going to shut down in November because of wind in Mandabu, October itself we have to uh, transport the seaweed to the growing season. That is in Pudukote. So when this Pudukote is shut down in April, May, then afterwards we have to we won't grow this because of shallow water growth in Pudukote. So due to sunlight, of, uh, due to the temperature rising in the Pudukote shallow water. So we, after April, May, we have to transfer the seed to the Pudukote. So these are the some triangle things. Because one uh, Pudukote, Ramna and Tutukuri. So these three districts we have been exchanging and transporting the seaweed for making the seed bank. So after that, the seaweed became big. And sometimes they were doing transportation, the seaweed became big, so it won't grow. So, so many things are there while doing while doing transportation. So why we need the seed bank? Mainly it helps the keep the seaweed life condition during the harsh weather. Yes, right? We can keep the seaweed in any condition in a safer space. And we can supply seed to non cultivators the developing seaweed cultivation. So because I told the seaweed cultivation doing in the sea, we, the open sea is very difficult, not an easy task. I told so many calamities, so many epiphytes uh, are attached and also the global warming. So keeping the seed in the proper way, otherwise we, we want the industries will be damaged. Because we need a seaweed for the industry like us, uh, so many industries depends on only the seaweed. So we have to keep the seaweed in the life condition for every year for the production for the industry development. So we need this. So seed bank need uh, mainly useful to the seaweed multiplication. Because I told you the seaweed has to be and if we keep the seaweed in one place, for example, this kapapa seaweed, the nativity of Bandamu will be for keeping for uh, two years or three years in the same size, it won't grow. We need a different water. It needs a different nutrient. It won't take the same nutrient the same day for the development or the growth anything. So we have to change it according to the season. We have to change, we have to make the seaweed replenish. So, we, for this reason, we are just this reason, we have been transferring seed to one district to another district. So, this is the main importance of the seed bank. So, why we need seed bank? So, this is the important points. So, this is the like seed. I told already vegetative propagation, no need of the lab or anything, but nowadays. We need this space to develop. Otherwise, next 30 years, the seaweed will be there, will be gone. Nothing can do because due to this is a simple plant. It won't tolerate that much salinity and that much temperature like that. We know that the will grow grow around 28 to 32 degrees. And uh, sunlight also around 28 to 32. This is the temperature. This is the nominal for the growth of the woods cupophagus to grow anywhere in the world. But nowadays, this seaweed is Diminishing all over the world, especially Kapavagas, not only diminishing in India, it is diminishing in a Asian country like Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, everywhere the diminishing. Reason, main reason is the global warming. That they expect that because of the global warming, the seed is breaking off, it's washed away like that. So we have to develop some techniques to make the seaweed healthy. So now we are having some little test. We see six energy, we started a little seaweed uh, like this. So we are be getting a good result in future. So this is the nurseries in Korea, Japan, peripheral nursery. Still, we didn't have a proper nursery for any seaweed. I'm saying it's very bad. And uh, quite we don't we don't have any seaweed actually. We have actually the prong, we have actually in a RGCA, in a fish, sipa, everything. But for seaweed, we need to develop one separate cell. Separate policy, separate governing agency. Because they're thinking that the experts in the seaweed experts, the seaweed scientists are thinking that this seaweed have vegetative propagation, no need like that. But after few years, I'm saying after 10 years or 20 years, this seaweed won't be there in our sea. I'm saying that. LA temperature, last 20 year temperature is different. Now this temperature is different totally. We don't know what will happen to seaweed. It's a simple plant. And it won't turn that much solid. We people, we can't stand the sun. Midnight, uh, mid-afternoon, till 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. That much temperature is rising. 
But how this plant can tolerate? So that we have to make some clear idea. What to do in the future? What we have to do? What kind of steps we have to initiate for being the seed cultivation boom? Already Japan, you know, everywhere they are made. But they are food grade. I am talking about food grade nursery that developed. So these are the Alba. How they are making seed? So these are the Philippines for the kapafagas. They are doing some hatcheries. The kapafagas hatcheries. This is a monostroma. How they are making nursery the land base and also they are going for the seed base. So this is land and nursery. How they are doing this? Each and every technique. They have every different, different technique. But still we have only one CV doing. That is very, very bad. India has a lot of resources. But still we are doing Kapafag is commercial scale. I am seeing the last 20 years. This grass area is having only the pilot scale. Not, it is not going to commercial. I don't know why. What is the reason? Because of the longer period growth. Now, now this fishermen need CV in only 40 days or 50 days. It's huge money. That only this cultivator fisherman will come to do this, engage these activities. But now the grass area, CSM Sierra develop everything. CSM Sierra develop everything. But still, they are not going for commercial. Still, they are going on that scale, that scale, doing their RD, everything. So, these are some land based uh, merits. I told already discussed continued supply of healthy seaweed to factory. We can monitor seaweed growth regulatory, engage less manpower in the farm, and uh, Free from the predator attacks, free from the natural calamity, or receive any condition, can do 10 months in the culture, constantly lead. And the cost expense is there, yeah. But doing all these things, we have to put some cost. So already, the Australian government had made one policy. See how it shows? It shows that land based seaweed, source of seaweed, cultivation of seaweed, the source can be potentially provide their seaweed products with a constant source of supply of food safety, integrity. So they made already a policy. The Austrian government they made already a policy. And also the Irish company, Irish government also made already a policy. See, growth, this land based, we have to motivate the land based cultivation. There are so many advantages in land based. They already made a policy. 2007 they made a policy. 2010 they made a policy. But in India still we are developing a land based, seed based cultivation for the policy, but not up to the for the land based. So these are the RVT harvesting board protein cultivation system. So this is a simple design for the land based uh, seed farming. It's a simple design. Anyone can do this. So, see what are pumping the powerhouse, blower is pump, see what outlet, both side, and see what inlet, aeration, everything is there. So, we designed this actually, see, we designed this uh, setup. As I told, what are the general environmental parameters we need for the land based cultivation? So, I have same as C, a same as C environment. We are making a C environment in the land based, pond based, raceway. That's why, that's nothing more different. So they, what they are going to do, actually what actually happening, they are making in the our control panel, that's all. So these are some points. So like 27 to 30 degrees Celsius, 7 to 8.5, and salinity 30 to 33 ppt, and water depth is 1 meter, and uh, the temps, so th these are the main things, nutrient below 1 milligram, ammonia. So this is already done, already uh, this it is a carried out. So I'm just giving this reference. <clears throat> so Chow uh, 2012 he made one test this is the growth performance with this uh, agriculture. So you can go through this uh, reference. We get a clear cut. And I'm, I'm coming to conclusion. So uh, in summary, the both uh, that is Kapapakas and other grass like anything, so they are a potential to cultivate land based or uh, tank based culture. In general, land based cultivation might also create a new opportunity. Yes, it will create a new opportunity because the Indian like country, the coastal population is very poor. So we develop this culture, tank culture, we can give a more opportunity to the fisher below poverty, below poverty fisher groups are more than in our Nau area or other coastal sites in Tamil Nadu. So we can give more uh, uh, employment. Therefore, this further research has to tank, uh, further research has to carry out in India, especially the R&D centers. So now I'm going to show the slide of the seed combine. So mainly developed by the C6 Energy. So this is the first ocean forming seed tractor patterned by C6 Energy, it's our company. So seed combine is nothing but is a seaweed 
See, Kemet is a seed harvester that helps in industrial production, not for the small scale at all. So, this seed combined can be doing uh, underactors, lines in a single vessel. Uh, uh, it's called a seed, uh, seed combined. So, seed combined brings together on a floating platform of all the operation involved the cultivation of seaweed. Imagine the labor, I told, we can do acres and acres and acres in the sea, open sea, with the minimal labor. This is called advanced technology. This is called advanced technology uh, for coming, uh, in what we have developed, we developed this technique. And C6 Raja our company has developed this technique. It allowed, it allowed the cultivation to deepen the rougher waters, enabling the access to more nutrient rich seaweed cultivation areas and constant growth season. Sea Cameron allows the operation in wider range of ocean condition even during rainy season also even during rainy season we can do the harvest we can cultivation and processing technology priority processing technology that allows the magnification of carotene and functional fibers that is the fresh event and uh, this is it's kind of it is a book actually this is a book uh, it have a wind it have a puller it have everything cut pear seed and everything the boat is uh, the farm is uh, three, three meters, three meters. The sea captain needs to travel to the top of the farm and processing the seaweed. And the sea captain is built in the catamaran with the two hulls, such the seaweed farms can go right in the bottom of the deck. So it will upper surface of the seaweed will be cutting with the cutter. So all of the superstructure of the sea captain is made with the fiberglass, the working deck is made with steel beams. So these are some uh, so it allows the great flexibility in the team for a configuration this uh, board, such sea command, CV processing, mobile factory, a CV transport board, everything. We can do everything in this board. And uh, this is a base. And sea command work with the certificate of agent set. And we have two 10 under board, I motors. And as I told you, the sea command can, uh, can capable of processing over 8 to 10 metric ton of CV in a shift, in one shift. This sea command, this sea factor, can process 8 to 10 metric ton. So, per day, if this can do as 170 metric ton per day. How much uh, seaweed we can process and we can uh, do cultivation and almost everything. So, this I told the steed air pressure, ground cutter winch, rope. So, these are some uh, like, uh, equipment with uh, our C60 combined. And these are some references. So, this uh, I will show some uh, YouTube. Uh, so what is C6? You can watch this video, so you will get some clear cut how the sick mind is working. Video. Yeah. So this is a sea combine. Is a pattern right from C6 Energy. So we have made this sea combine the prototype, and already we operated the system in Indonesia. Yeah, we we, we operated. We got succeeded, and uh, this this sea combine we have in Indonesia company. So we have a C6 Energy Indonesia. So in Indonesia coast, we are operating this thing combined. So after C after C we let them know it will it will store in the further container the ship. So this is going to be growing demand. So the food fuel agreement, the large amount of IMA seed. So see how how big thing we are doing. So this is the C combined. C6 has developed this technique. C combined. We have a lot of engineers from IID that develop these techniques. So we can prepare a food grade thing in the deep water. This is a deep water technology. This is a deep water technology. Powered by C6 energy, yeah. Thank you.
So this is our uh, C6 uh, video. So why we are doing? Why we took this uh, initiating of C6 energy? Why we took C8 and what are the use? This is our corporate video, physics energy video. This is the center we have now, as headquarters, GPS. This is our GPS lab. The green biofuel developed pattern of seaweed biofuel. So, all this due to one seed plant that is our gamma fires. So, how they are seeding green seed. This is our photo technology, deep water automated seaweed cultivation, not by CV, a CC technology. So these are different types of uh, cutting, venting. So he is our CEO, C. Kumar. These are the four founders. This is our Tuturi factory. We have a lot of fertilizers. These are the factory units. Thank you, thank you very much. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you? Sir, I will read out some questions right now posed by the uh, participants. There is okay. a, Sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, Praveena Soman. Yes, Praveena Soman has asked, only ocean near places can practice seaweed culture. What about the freshwater, brackish water species farming? Uh, no, actually, uh, freshwater, the seaweed is only for a sea, not for the freshwater. So I told already, this sea, any quiet water with the salinity, 28 to 32 ppt can do the seaweed culture. So freshwater, it can't do the seaweed cultivation. And brackish water, brackish water is 15 to 22 ppt. So there also we can't do the seaweed cultivation. Only a sea. Quality, that is 28, minimum 28, maximum 33 PPT, we can do the CV cultivation. Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, sir. Uh, next question is from Ayatunde. It was, uh, he is actually congratulated. It was very informative presentation. Uh, is this seaweed peculiar to the temperature region or can we also practice it here in the tropical environment? Oh, as from me, Nigeria, sir. Some, okay, this seaweed, actually tropical seaweed, for example, in Nigeria, tropical belt, like India, Africa, Australia, these are tropical belt. We can do all this tropical seaweed. But what the China are doing, land area, kelp, and we can't do it here because that temperature is cold water temperature species. We can't do it here in India or like country. So we need the species. So what is the native species we can do here? For example, glass, glass layer we can do here culture and this cup of eggs we can do culture and the other seaweeds also we can do culture. So we know that which seaweed, which region it is growing in nativity. So that seaweed we have to we have to go for the promotion activity. Not for the post water and our cold water species we can do it here. Yes ma'am. Uh, next question is from Jayalakshmi. Because of sea ice disease, the Capophycus culture stopped sometime in Ramnad. How to rectify this problem, sir? Yes. So I want to talk about this ice disease. So ice disease, so it came to India uh, in 2008 to 2009, and majorly in 2015, 16 and all. So it's nothing but ice disease. Still, no, it is a question mark. So ice disease is mainly because of uh, causing temperature or water nutrient or any light or anything. Still our scientists are going on doing R and D this ice disease. Some scientists are saying this ice disease because of the nutrient. So because of the uh, nutrient only it is coming. Some scientists saying that because of uh, bacterial infection. So bacterial infection, if any bacterial infection comes, when the plant is not going there, so automatically this species, uh, this bacteria will attach that. So Mainly any plant, land plant or seed plant, we need a proper nutrient for the growth. If you are land, land terrestrial plant also, if you are not pouring regular water as a small plant, it, it will die. If you put in the hot summer with any tree, without pouring water, that will die. So we have to take extra care for the land base. But like that, not to happen in the sea because sea is a natural thing. So when the wind will come, when will uh, when will go tide, everything will come. So because so this Mando region. People are doing, I have seen Mandom cultivation from 2002 onwards. So, and I'm, my experience, I'm sorry, I'm seeing all the things. So, when I came in 2004, 5, 6, 7, and all, no, that time, it is, I see 10,000 to 15,000 rafts in the, all the Mandom area. That much rafts, that much growing seaweed. That is 60 kg of seaweed, it gives around 60 days, we got 500 kg. So imagine this 60 kg to 500 kg seaweed, we got in 60 days. That much seaweed we have seen. The raft, the raft size sink because of weight. The raft, bamboo raft will sink. That thing can happen now. Now what is happening now is latest thing. Now 50 kg or 60 kg is growing only 180 to 200 kg, not up to the mark. So why this raft culture is uh, failed in shallow water means the nutrient replenishment is not happening in the shallow water. So my advice is to keep the rafts in above, that is in the uh, deeper water of the Mandamo. So deeper water of the Mandamo, we need a nutrition, nutrition water more in that area. So automatically the seed will grow. So we won't find uh, this thing, ISS disease. And also, we have to keep the rat somewhat below the surface. If you keep the rat below the surface, means the warmer water won't affect it. Temperature will affect, won't affect it. So these are some techniques. That's why they are doing so many and this only will come to know. So, okay, this is a, how to give the ice disease. Oh, this is the method to keep the rat in the fast water, keep below the bottom. So, so, these are the techniques we have to follow in doing summer now. Yes, next. Uh, Mr. Menon Ramachandran Krishna has asked, why seaweed is not grown in many coastal states in India, inclusive of West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Karnataka, Goa and Maharashtra? Yeah, I don't know. Recently, that is last 20 25 years only, we developed uh, this seaweed cultivation farm in open sea. And also, this we need a suitable parameters. It won't grow anywhere. This is a plant. We are not doing a land based cultivation. That's why I'm going to promote this land based cultivation. So, this sea have a different tide, different wave, different roughness. And also, uh, we need mainly shallow water. 
because doing a bamboo raft method means it need a warm this is not rough region means some shallow water needed so if you take the shallow water and nutrient water rich water means that is a park bay gulf of manar only a suitable place for seed cultivation so if you, i went all over the coast i traveled all over the coast for the seed cultivation andhra i went west bengal i went gujarat i went so little, little patches that doing after that they are not doing because the season and also the climate is not uh, giving benefits not giving any advance uh, thing climate because i went to nayalanka and region in uh, andhra so they are doing one of my friend is doing a cage culture uh, got him nfdv fund and all so he uh, called me once and uh, with the ap government i also went like a consultant i went i given my idea they given i given seed but it not developed because Sunlight is fortified. I told wherever we need, we need a proper sunlight, proper light, proper wave action, not rough water, not rough areas, and it needs some soft bottom, not rocky shore. So we this won't do. This we can't do it in a rocky shore or uh, some uh, uh, bottom uh, means some coral island, and we can't do it here. So so these are lot lot of consequences there. So we can't do it anywhere as it of the coastal waters there. So only this land-based cultivation and providing this thing. So only two areas in Tamil uh, in India. That is Gujarat, Gulf of Kerala, and Gulf of Manar here in our Tamil Nadu. These are two places prominently. Still, some oranges has to take place in West Coast also. Same for some areas in Ratnagiri is a proper area. Some areas in Goa is also some good areas there. But still, we need the people to do. Goa like a tourist place. We can't engage some labor there to do because. That is a place, Rohan. No? There, the people will get low, uh, below poverty line, can only can do this uh, engagement, this engage the seed cultivation. Because Kanyakumari people are rich people. Of course, if you see the Kanyakumari coast, we can't say that is a uh, fisherman village or fisherman community village. There are big, big hard, big, big house, big, big buildings. Kanyakumari, they won't work for this five rupees, six rupees uh, cultivation, Rohan. No? So for that only we need advanced technology because they have a lot of money. Lot of uh, thing, but we need to give some technology which can easily harvest. Like cucumber, we can promote there in Kanyakumari. So we need a below poverty line. So like that means Bandhuam and some areas in Gujarat we will get cheap labor. So they have some livelihood promotion. So they can do it easily. So people like Andhra, Andhra coastal very prawn culture, very and massively developed. So they won't come and work. So we have to develop land-based agriculture. See it for me. We can give to them, and they will do nicely. Because Andhra Pradesh or Orissa and other West Bengal, they have a few, lot of uh, um, uh, people having money, but they don't have technology. But people, high people, high-end people, they won't work for this law and uh, thing. So that's why they are not doing. People are not uh, engaging. And also, the land and the area and the sea, everything has to be. Uh, Need a suitable parameter level. Otherwise, it can't. Uh, it can't materialize. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I saw one question by Mr. Ramesh Bosle. He has asked yeah. which seaweed species culture is dominant in India. Yeah. So in India, the only species commercial for last two decades is Papaya salvarsi. I told already it is a vegetative propagation. Just uh, need pick some little plant. Put it in the water for the sunlight and the sea water to grow nicely. So it grow, it won't require any fertilizer, anything. Just to open sea and sunlight is enough. And this is a seventy to eighty percentage, not eighty percent, eighty five to ninety percentage of the Indian people, fisherman communities like the seaweed cultivators, they are doing this uh, cup of ice. Only ten to fifteen percentage or ten percentage only they are doing other culture like uh, cup of ice, glass ice, headless, dura, and all they are doing. So why they are going for this cup of ice means this cup of ice have a easy growth with any condition because if you take the this thing our grass area the cup of ice harvest is 40 to 45 days we can harvest and that grass area harvest is 100 days so fishermen or seaweed farmers they won't wait for 100 days for harvest so 30 days harvest they can easily harvest and they will send to factory. Or uh, 100 days harvest. In between 100 days, some calamities, that's the calamities comes with corn case, not wasted, cost. So that's why this cup of egg is uh, commercially doing it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. That's it, sir. Sir, so, thank you. 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 Thank you.
So thank you very much, sir. Uh, I think the, there are a lot of compliments regarding your presentation today. Lot of people have told it's a very informative session and they really enjoyed your session a lot today, sir. Of course, there yeah. are a lot of questions, but uh, the participants should also understand we have a lot of questions and a lot of participants and it practically is impossible to answer all the questions. If you have any particular questions, please write into my uh, mail ID so that I can forward it to the resource person and get the clarification. Thank you once again, sir. For a wonderful session on uh, how we can use seaweeds for a sustainable future. Let me go on to the formal vote of thanks. On behalf of the PG and the Research Department of Advanced Zoology and Biotechnology, Guru Nanak College, it is my duty to thank our resource person of today, Dr. Jaya Kumar, who has delivered such a wonderful and informative session on seaweed farming. The participants would agree with me that have, after hearing today's session, we learned about commercial seaweeds and the economic and commercial importance of this seaweed. Thank you so much, sir, for this informative session. Uh, Thank you. My special thanks to Dr. Chandrasekhar, sir. Thank you. My special thanks to Dr. Chandrasekhar, sir, for referring an excellent resource person as Dr. Jay Kumar. I thank all the participants for attending the session. We meet again tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Good evening. Good day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. For giving me a wonderful opportunity to express my thinking. Thank you, sir. We really enjoyed the session. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.